this country has perhaps the best constitution on earth. This country. This country has always been presented as a symbol to the point that people come here. People don't go to Russia. They come here because of what this country says and offers. People like myself are disappointed of finding that a lot of the things that are offered are not true. They're like a Hollywood set. Great house on the outside, and when you open it and you look, just sticks. There's nothing else in. There's still some furniture around. And what people like myself are trying to say is, don't, you know, don't do this, you know, because it is a symbol that it, it, it embodies the best possible offering that society can make or humans can make to another one. You know, when I found out in Panama, and I grew up believing this was the biggest, greatest country on earth, me and millions of Latin Americans, we believed it because of the music, we believed it because of the movies, we believed it because of the role of the U.S. Uh, by defeating fascism. We, we, we were, you know, our heroes. Where U.S. was the, our hero. Now, when I, when I found out, you know, that a black in this country couldn't sit up in the front of a bus as close as 1963, Disappointment said, "What in the in the land of the free?" You know, and then you begin to to ask yourself a lot of things and reevaluate a lot of things. In 1964, there were riots in Panama, where we had 21 dead, 500 wounded, only because we wanted to put our flag next to the to the U.S. flag. Well, the whole issue of the um, of the Panama Canal has been an emotional one has involved uh, Panamanians and North Americans uh, since the late uh, 19th century. Uh, a tremendous engineering feat. And nevertheless, it did not uh, produce the, the type of benefits that were originally expected from uh, the Panamanian side. The history of the canal has been one of clashes between uh, U.S. and Panamanian authorities, and uh, which led uh, to substantial changes throughout the, the years. It is interesting to say, in the future, the year 2000 will be actively uh, involved in the administration of the canal. Like I said before, there's been a great amount of Panamanians who have died uh, defending the notion of sovereignty and and uh, we were always concerned about the jurisdiction over the, not just the canal itself but over the ter territories that surround it. It's going to be very interesting to see what's going to develop in years to come. We should hope that we will learn both sides to communicate and work with each other. I wrote this song titled Shark, Tiburón. Now, the purpose of the song was to express my and our dislike for inter intervention. Now, U.S. foreign policy has been intervening in the region all this time. So, of course, the song would directly be uh, placed on the U.S. But then a funny thing happened. England had a problem also with Argentina. And then the song all of a sudden is not a song that, is, that can be applied exclusively to the US. I am also opposed, if the Russians would walk in, uh, send an army and walk inside of any Latin American country, you know, like just walk in to put order and whatnot, I'd scream, of course I'd scream, because what's the difference between a Russian or, a, or North American in terms of intervention? None. The problem that we've had in Latin America, though, has not been with Russian paratroopers or Russian Marines. There weren't Russian Marines who jumped in Panama in 64. There weren't Russian Marines who jumped in Santo Domingo in 65. If there had been Russian Marines, we would have thrown rocks at them, too, and asked them to get the hell out of there and go back to where they belong.
all we want is to be left to deal with our own problems, I think we have the capacity. And at any rate, we have the responsibility to do it for ourselves. Tiburón! Against intervention, pa. witness a political assassination right here in the streets of Panama, folks. The majority of my songs are songs that are describing situations that occur in Latin American cities in general. The songs about love, songs about problems in the street, problems in life, relationships. Some are funny, others are tragic. But I mean, I'm doing like an urban chronicle type of music. That's what I'm doing. Uh, basically, it's like musical journalism in a way. It's like a reporting the city folklore. Now, within the Latin American so uh, society, politics are very important, and they permeate society. I mean, whether you like it or not, you, ha you are involved in what's going on. Some are passive, others are active, but I mean, we're all involved. Political uh, consequences affect us all. Well. I found this, it's a quote of uh, Pablo Casals. Pablo Casals, you know, the, the celloist from Puerto Rico. Pablo Casals uh, said, I know there are those who believe artists should live in an ivory tower, 
removed from the struggles and suffering of their fellow men. That is a concept to which I have never been able to subscribe. An affront to human dignity is an affront to me. And to protest injustice is a matter of conscience. Are human rights of less importance to an artist than to other men? Does being an artist exempt one from his obligations as a man? If anything, the artist has a particular responsibility because he has been granted special sensitivities and perceptions and because his voice may be heard when other voices are not. Who indeed should be more concerned than the artist with the defense of liberty and free inquiry, which is essential to his very creativity? It wasn't really a political assassination, it was a, not at all. Those things don't happen here. There is a tradition in Latin America, certainly in Mexico and other places, of using the lyrics of music to make social points, political points, to tell stories. Yeah. Certainly most, most I, that I know best of is in, in, in um, Mexico. Yeah. But Cuban music, for whatever reason, you know, probably the dictatorships that have lasted for so long there, mm -hmm. never didn't seem to have that tradition. It was really more a celebration or, yeah. uh, or a love, the traditional love song. Mm -hmm. was, I was there an incorporation made? Certainly in your music there is. Yeah, but I think one of, the, I, pro pro probably one of the reasons that could explain that was that since the music was basically produced within the ghetto, played by ghetto residents, right. and when I say ghetto I don't mean it despectively, I'm just reflecting uh, people who live under the same kind of conditions, uh, not the most favorable conditions that a society can bring and uh, produce for its members because it was a ghetto type of music and addressed ghetto situations and it was used mainly to escape that tremendous you know pressure of living under that those conditions the music was never utilized to address Saturday night music exactly it was Saturday night music let's have, go have a drink and let's have a good time and let's talk about this and that and also it just reflected like 